Bible colleges are not the only controversial area in which the university offers degrees. In Barcelona, you can study for a University of Wales Bachelor of Science in traditional Chinese medicine. The college, called Ismet, has not answered our questions about what they teach, but their website says students will learn the classic theory and practice of Chinese medicine. I've come to a Chinese medicine practitioner in Wales to find out about a completely different view of health. Practitioners say they use skills developed over thousands of years to prescribe acupuncture or herbal remedies. I'm getting checked over, and it seems the colour of my tongue is important. They've concluded that I'm a bit weak, and mix a special remedy just for me. Millions of people use these remedies, and you can study alternative medicine as a degree at a handful of UK universities. But some scientists say this is completely wrong. Professor Gahoon. Hello. Very Good nice to, to meet you, you Kieran. We've got these shops selling Chinese medicine on high streets up and down the country. It doesn't do anyone any harm, does it? Much of it will be harmless, but that's not the point. The point is it's meant to do you good, and there's no real evidence at all that it does. It's, it's simply dangerous because you don't even know what dose it is. Isn't that all the more reason to give degrees in this kind of subject so that people are trained, so they know the dangers, they know the doses, all that kind of stuff. It's all above board. That's why we give degrees in it. They're spending three years memorizing things which are myth and pre-scientific untruths. That, that's not a degree, that's just a travesty. <laughs> And why are professors like yourself, why do you have a bee in your bonnet about this? Does it matter that they, that they award degrees in something a little bit different? The universities are meant to be guardians of sort of intellectual truth. That's, that's, and uh, this is the, an absolute betrayal of that job which we're supposed to be doing. We've had long debates in, in the health committee in the University of Wales about where we would draw the line in terms of what we validate. They have to demonstrate to us that there is some basis, scientific basis for the practice, uh, that there is an established curriculum, that there is an established safe practice. So you're confident that Chinese traditional medicine works? I I didn't say that. I said that there, are, there is evidence that it, it does work. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, traditional Western medicine that is operating with very little underpinning in terms of its, its science, in terms of its outcomes. Uh, and we, as I say again, we are trying to uh, enforce these professions to undertake effective research. Choosing which degree to study is one of the most important decisions you'll ever take. And it's vital to have all the facts that you're Alternative coming. medicine and evangelical Bible colleges are controversial, but most of the university's validated courses are in more traditional subjects, like business. But one academic who visited validated colleges for the University of Wales until 2004 has concerns about the quality of these courses. They were just delivered almost in a sense like a factory. They were in, they were delivered a, a particular subject and they were out very quickly. And as, a, as a body, as in a team of, of academics going into any institution, it, we tried to get into the depth. But time didn't allow that. We were literally into the organisations a day, two days, three days. And of course they presented what they felt should be presented. And, and we very rarely seen behind the scenes. The University of Wales says his criticisms are no longer valid, as it has since recruited a number of expert senior staff to oversee the validation process. But my research shows there are still embarrassing problems. Remember this guy? He's a pop star and college chief. He insists the University of Wales is rigorous. Every now and then they will come down and reassess all the uh, paperwork, all the documentation, and all the students' work. He's hardly a typical college head, but Dr. Fasley does boast an enviable string of qualifications. His doctorate and his MBA were awarded in that citadel of education, Cambridge. And here he is pictured at the university's prestigious business school. 
He studied here for all of four days, and at the end of it, he walked away with a doctorate. But it wasn't from Cambridge University. His degree is from the now defunct European Business School Cambridge. It has nothing to do with this prestigious university, and it never had any right to award degrees. The college was part of the Irish International University, which was exposed as a sham. Dr. Fazley's degree is a fake. He's not Dr. Fazley at all, just plain old Mr. Fazley. Later in the programme, I'm going to confront him and university officials about this. But I've discovered it's not the only mistake they've made. I've been investigating a fashion college in Bangkok, where the principal could be spending a bit of time in jail. When the University of Wales comes to countries like this, they're not just checking if the courses are okay. They've got to check the college too. The code of practice for universities makes absolutely clear that they must check the legal status of the college they are working with. This fashion college should have gone through a registration process before it could open in Thailand. You just put the name of the university you want to establish, uh, what is your objective, uh, what kind of program you want to offer, and after that we have to take a look and make the analysis. We approve the Minister of Education and give you a, a certificate and you can operate that. But the college never registered. They only came to see Dr. Yamun after they were ordered to shut down. They sent the representative to see my staff and request on the document. They tell you know, the way to, to submit the request. And then they're gone. They never come back. It's in the hand of the policeman and the attorney general and they will submit to the court. There could be serious consequences for the college. Another fashion school has just been taken to court in a similar case. They fine 400,000 baht and imprisonment six months. In breach of its watchdog's guidelines, the university validated a course at an unregistered and therefore illegal college. It now claims the situation has changed. Um, the uh, the college is now recognised within Thailand and is, is legally operating. Uh, and and th that's the latest information that I have on that particular college. These have been a big issue in Malaysia, and Mr. Fazli says he's checked his staff. Um, we did a thorough check. So far, um, the staffs are quite okay. No one with bogus degrees and what, whatnot. And what about you yourself? Are your degrees all above board? Yes, um, sorry? Are all your degrees above boards and legitimate? Do you have uh, Yes, yes, of course, of course. I did my MBA and my DBA with a uh, private institution. And yes, there were issues asking about where did I did my degree. And there were issues about where I studied. There were issues about bogus universities. As far as I'm concerned, what I went through was all uh, through proper channel. In fact, he admits he had doubts about the degree years ago. As soon as I graduated, um, I suspected that there was something fishy going on when I said, uh, is this fully recognised by the government? Are you happy to call yourself a doctor? Uh, I've told all my TV programmes to not put DR in front of my name until it's being solved. But it's on your website? Yeah, it was supposed to be removed. Yeah. Okay, okay. I've not been he says he never lied to the University of Wales. Yes. You've not been totally honest with him, have you? Uh, I am ready to be honest if they ask, answer to them if they were to ask. And this is the crucial thing. The University of Wales never asked about Fazli Jacob's degree. The next day, Dr. Fazli became just Fazli. His bogus degree has been removed from the college's website. But that's not enough for this Malaysian politician. The, the University of Wales should now review the relationship with this particular college that uh, Dr. Fazli hates. Uh, they should see if the, the relationship should persist or should it be terminated with immediate effect due to the fact that it's being led by someone with uh, questionable credentials. 
Um, what do you think they should do? They should terminate it. University representatives travel the world checking on validated courses. Some are permanent members of the university's validation unit. Others are expert academics hired in when they're needed. Together, they look after the interests of 14,000 students overseas. But they've managed to come home without finding out that one college was operating illegally and another was run by a man with bogus degrees. The university's mission is to work with universities of good standing around the world. But their involvement in these colleges must surely put this into question. Did you know that Fasley had a bogus degree? Uh, no, well, we didn't. No, we, we do now. We, we, we've been told. You've told us that he had a bogus degree. The reason that we didn't know was that during our validation process, we look in great detail and interview the people who are going to teach on the course. He's not ha having anything to do with these students. Because it only took me a couple of minutes on Google mm -hmm. to find out that there were questions about his potential. How did no one in the University of Wales find that out? Uh, we, he wasn't one of the people that we were looking at. We were looking at the people who were teaching on the course. That's our, that was our primary aim. The University does have a complex system of checks. So maybe when they award so many degrees in so many colleges, a few mistakes are inevitable. And there is an organisation which audits universities, the Quality Assurance Agency, or QAA. As luck would have it, they sent inspectors to Fasley International College earlier this year. Mr. Fasley says they made thorough checks, and they should have done. They sent nine people and spent £91,000 to check on a number of British-Malaysian links. But how thorough were they? Just like the University of Wales, the QAA completely missed the fact that Fasley had a fake degree. Professor Geoffrey Alderman audited institutions for the QAA's predecessor. He says the QAA should be more thorough. Simply because I say that I've checked out the qualifications of the head of the institution, the QAA should not take that, tick the box and go on. They should say, well, how did you check out the qualifications? They should check out the qualifications themselves. And they should say, well, you found one thing, but actually we found something different. I'm afraid with the, with the current paper-based methodology of the Quality Assurance Agency, this was bound to happen, and I'm just surprised it hasn't happened more frequently. But it seems that to the QAA, Mr. Fasley's bogus degrees may not be too much of a problem. It doesn't seem to square that you can say, on the one hand, come to our college, we'll give you a decent education, a UK education, and on the other hand, I've got a bogus degree. Well, as I say, we, we don't condone the bogus degree, and I think uh, the status of the individual uh, is not necessarily associated with the status of the organisation. He says that the, neither the QA nor the University of Wales asked him about his own credentials. Yes, I saw that comment, and I, I don't really know because I wasn't involved in the actual review activity. But it wouldn't necessarily be a specific question as part of the audit activity. We are, as I say, focused on the University of Wales and its responsibilities in terms of the management of the, of the courses. The day after the QAA spoke to us, they changed their guidelines, demanding extra checks on the owners of colleges. And on the same day, the University of Wales suspended its links with Mr Fasley, pending an inquiry into his qualifications. And tonight, Mr. Fasley has announced his resignation as Executive Director of Fasley International College. We have suspended our relationship with Fasley and they're not allowed to admit any more students until we've gone out there and undertaken an investigation, particularly looking at him. Some politicians are now questioning the whole future of the University of Wales. Well, I think the Minister has got to uh, deal with this problem very rapidly and very decisively. He needs to investigate these allegations. It's not the first time allegations of this type have been made, and we were assured a few years ago that they had been dealt with. And I think the Minister needs to ask, has the University of Wales, as an institution, validating degrees throughout